active duty service members, student borrowers, and families all across this country. Thank you. Thanks, Senator Warner. Senator uh, Danes from Montana is recognized. Jerome Brown, thank you. Uh, Dr. Chopra, thanks for appearing before the committee today. I continue to hear from folks across my state of Montana about the adverse impact your agency's actions are having from increased compliance costs to one-size-fits-all mandates that just don't work in rural communities. It appears to me the CFPB, under your leadership, has become a political arm of the Biden administration, rushing through progressive actions that in many cases have bipartisan opposition here in Congress. One example of this is the 1071 rule, which I'll get to momentarily. But first, I want to start with uh, credit card late fees. I saw Senator Warren was asking some of the same questions. In February, CFPB proposed a rule to reduce late fees that credit card issuers can charge customers. But your own data, as CFPB, shows that 74% of customers make payments on time and will not see any positive impact from this proposal. They will, however, see potential impact on increased annual fees, reduced rewards, lower credit limits, because prudential regulators require banks to offset the credit risk so as to maintain safety and soundness. Further, I have serious concerns that this rule will lead to more consumers paying bills late, which will in turn negatively impact their future credit worthiness. In other words, we're not going to, um, they're going to stop or lower the penalties paid for those who aren't paying bills on time in trade-off for increasing costs or reducing rewards for those who do pay on time. So my question is, why would your agency proceed with a rule that would potentially cause hardship to those it actually seeks to help? So respectfully, that's actually not how the credit card business works. The way credit card underwriting works is it's an individualized uh, interest rate. So it's underwritten based on your own individual data. They don't have one price or one rate that they give everyone and cross-subsidize amongst them. Our goal is to make sure that the CARD Act is being followed. The CARD Act prohibits unreasonable or disproportionate penalty fees. Our proposed rule, which we are still working through, allows a company, an issuer, to recoup. And as, as Senator Warren just mentioned, they just have to be able to show the math. And of course, it does not take away the ability of the card issuer to lower their credit limit if they're late, to increase their interest rate, or if they never pay, to sue them. So um, let me ask you, as you say, you're still in the um, deliberative phase, perhaps, on this rule. To, to what extent did your agency engage with the prudential regulators while crafting this proposal? Well, we, we certainly communicate and consult with the prudential regulators on these types of rules. In fact, I believe we may even be required to. There's many ways in which various uh, banking regulations intersect with each other. Did, did, how so we, kind of feedback did you get from those regulators? Um, I'm not going to, I need to really check because I'm sure we talked to each individual one as well as in a group, but I would did generally they any, say- they any concerns about it generally or- um, I would need to check. I'm happy to answer for the record for you. But as, as I said before, because the credit card industry doesn't have one price, it does underwriting. I think the effect that you're but mentioning just, but, is but unlikely. Say, but do you have like a top line summary? I mean, you said you have to check. I mean, it's, it's pretty important feedback from the prudential regulators. But yeah, I think the, the overall feedback is that it would not have an impact on safety and soundness of financial institutions. Do you have any adverse effect on, on some car credit card holders? Well, I think, again, our, our cons consultation with them, I think, is on safety and soundness. But I'm happy to check and answer more for the record. And just so you know, I'm with you. I don't want to create a situation where you know some people are are incentivized to not pay, but we also need to make sure that this is reasonable. When I talk to smaller credit card issuers, they're not building a business model where they're rooting for their customers to be late. Greetings, friends. This is important news. You may be missing out on extra money from our federal government. There are over five credits that could save you thousands of dollars. Lawmakers are urging the American people to take action as quickly as possible. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video to hear about all of these details. Also, this coming Friday and every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, 
please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning the weekly giveaways. According to Newsweek, taxpayers in 2024 can pivot to leveraging various credits to potentially save money during the tax filing season. The stimulus checks given directly to Americans by our federal government over the course of 2020 and 2021 were crisis-era anomalies. But the Internal Revenue Service continues to offer several annual tax breaks to eligible filers, ranging from support for families to green energy initiatives. According to the IRS, tax credits are defined as a dollar-for-dollar dollar amount that taxpayers claim on their tax return to directly reduce the money they owe. Tax credits can either be refundable or non-refundable. Refundable credits allow taxpayers to receive the difference if their tax bill is less than the credit amount, potentially increasing their refund. But on the other hand, non-refundable credits can reduce the tax bill to zero, but don't offer any refund on the remaining credit amount. Cress Wooden, the lead tax specialist at the Internal Revenue Service, told Newsweek that the availability and types of tax credits can vary each tax year. Wooden added that it's crucial for taxpayers to review them carefully when preparing for their tax returns. So key tax credits include the child tax credit, which families who earn less than $400,000 a year can claim $2,000 per child under 17, with a refundable portion of $1,600. The state of Minnesota still offers a child tax credit. Eligible Minnesota families will receive a direct payment worth $1,750 from the state's child tax credit program in 2024. The state, along with Oregon and Utah, created new child tax credits this year, while lawmakers in seven other states expanded existing credits. Minnesota passed bills to provide advance payments throughout the year, rather than a one-time lump sum to families. An analysis from the Institute on Taxation shows that in nearly every state, a combination of the existing federal tax credit and a state credit up to $2,000 would slash childhood poverty rates by at least a quarter. Tens of thousands of Colorado families are also set to receive child tax credit payments to the tune of $1,200 per child in 2024. To be eligible, residents must have incomes of $75,000 or less, or $85,000 for married couples filing joint returns. In addition, eligible filers can also claim the Child Independent Care Credit, which covers up to 35% of care expenses for dependents. Many experts say that the maximum amount of child or dependent care expenses that a taxpayer can claim under taxes is $3,000 for one dependent and $6,000 for two or more dependents. The Earned Income Tax Credit assists low and moderate income workers with a credit range from $600 to $7,430, depending on their family size and their income. According to the Internal Revenue Service, approximately 31 million workers received about $64 billion from the Earned Income Tax Credit last year. The average credit amount was $2,043. In general, to qualify for the Earned Income Tax Credit, you must have earned income under $63,398 in 2023. For educational expenses, the American Opportunity Tax Credit provides a maximum annual credit of $2,500 per student for the first four years of higher education. This is while the Lifetime Learning Credit offers up to $2,000 per tax return for various educational costs with no limit on claimable years. While crisis-related stimulus has lessened for many, 
There are one-time rebates still in play in Alabama, Minnesota, and Arizona. The Arizona Department of Revenue has sent out hundreds of thousands of checks and made direct bank deposits from a rebate created by the Arizona Freedom Caucus. Households with at least one dependent child listed in 2021 tax returns should have received $100 per child who's 17 years or older or $250 per child who's 16 years or younger. Taxpayers receiving the money had to be full-year Arizona residents for tax year 2021 and have at least $1 in personal income tax liability. And so far, nearly 700,000 families have received a total of more than $275 million. Well, my greatest and beautiful friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Dear friends, thank you so much for being part of this community. To say thank you and to show my appreciation, every Friday I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways.